what's up everybody welcome to the show um got got my team with me today little emerson little levi um and we are doing some pretty cool stuff i actually had some more changes happen on the farm here and i'm going to show you a little bit of it first of all it is cold and rainy and crappy out here walk over here y'all walk over there say hey Wave to them. Say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right. So like I said, I got the team with me there, but I got something pretty cool to show you guys. So first of all, the tractor did arrive and the tiller and all that, I'm gonna show you it, but uh, made some changes yesterday. I had been considering trading in my service truck for a heavier one. I wanted a preferably a 4500 or a 5500. I've been running a one ton for, I've had this truck for about seven years. And uh, it just, I wish it was heavier. It's, it has plenty of pulling power, but the stopping power with like the water trailer and some of that stuff, I've always kind of wanted something heavier. So I jumped on this and have traded. You can see my service trucks back there. The guy is awesome. He's letting me get my stuff off of it and put on this truck. So I got a Ram 4500. Uh, my dad's got a 5500 Ram in the back. It's been a great truck. So I feel really good about going in that direction. I still love, I mean, I would prefer it be a, a GMC or Chevrolet because that's just, that's my preference. But you can't hardly find the 5500s or 4500s. And I don't want one of the weird top kicks. So. I traded for this Ram. It is a 2014 model. I really like the bed. This is one of the things I've wished that I had had on mine with some of these upper boxes. But that bed <clears throat> wasn't, it just really wasn't quite big enough for the setup. This one's a little bit bigger bed um, and I just, I like it a lot. But I gotta make a few changes. This big box came on it and it's a nice chest but i don't need that so i'm gonna cut it off it's actually welded on there i gotta take the grinder and cut that the welds off of that and there is a small <coughs> tank fuel tank on the back and it may it might even be about 100 gallons i say small but it doesn't seem to be working i've got a big tank on the back of that truck so i'm leaning towards probably taking this tank off and putting mine on there off of that one. Now, I mean, it would be great if that tank would work uh, and I wouldn't have to put this one because that one is big. That tank takes up a lot of space. Now, it's about 100, it's 150. I mean, it, it holds a pretty good bit of fuel, but it is large. So if I could use that tank on there, that would be ideal because the bed is it's big. It's a big bed, but get this off of there. I'm gonna run the welder down one side. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna cut, cut a hole out in the side of one of these boxes and run my leads up in there. That's what I had been, that's what I had said I wanted to do on my truck here was put some boxes, cut a hole in the side of it and run my leads in it to keep them out of the weather and make them last a lot longer. So. I will do that on this truck. I got to decide which side I'm going to put it on. Uh, my, my chest drawers and stuff, that's going to get a little trickier on this truck just because of the setup. I do like this. I can put a hydraulic oil bucket in there, keep them from just sliding around everywhere. But that is the project for today is to get this truck pretty well swapped over or at least started like I said, the guy is really cool. He's given me a lot of time to get them swapped over. So, you know, within this, by the end of this coming week, I need to have it swapped over. And uh, let me get down from here without falling. I'll show you the tractor. <clears throat> this came in, we actually went yesterday, took the kids there. Y'all draining the water hole? Good deal. Hard at it. <laughs> um, we took them yesterday to the farm and gin show out here in Memphis. I always, we always go. I love the farm and gin show. 
you know, I didn't walk around. I had considered like, well, I ought to take the GoPro and video it. I feel weird doing that. I know quite a few people at the gin show, like walking around different companies. So I really was like, ah, I don't want to make it awkward for anybody walking around videoing, uh, videoing it. So I did not take the GoPro, but it was really cool. I, I love it. I always, we always go. I encourage anybody that, you know, is remotely into ag, go to the farm and gin show. It's really a, it's a cool thing. You'll see some awesome equipment. You can walk around, talk to some people doing some cool stuff. And uh, they're all really friendly and nice to talk to. So definitely encourage you to go check it out. We went, like I said, yesterday, which would have been Friday. I always try to go on Friday because I do try to avoid the Saturday crowd in Memphis. But, all right, so here is the tractor. I gotta actually dump the bucket. The rain holding a little water, but we got the bucket and he threw in a set of forks because i mean we've done a good bit of business so he threw these forks in for me which is great because this tractor will be my i mean this is my forklift um this is the tractor it is a, a 5090e they did put the 540m front end loader on it they put fluid in the tires i still might end up having to put some weights on it because we'll use this to get seed and different things off and it is a lot of weight on the front of this tractor and this is the tiller so we are just about to the point of having everything we need for the produce for what i'm wanting us to have and <clears throat> again we were in a unique position and i'll talk a little bit about that here in just a second but uh first i want to go over all this so got the quick hitch on here you know, I think I had talked a little bit about this when I showed the video of us hooking up the uh, plastic layer that I got parked out there. Well, he did hook me up with a quick hitch, which will be perfect. Because everything that I'm going to use this tractor for, the quick hitch will, will work. So that is going to be a lifesaver, having the quick hitch. It's just super convenient on there. And then this is a Frontier RT2283 tiller. I think it's seven foot wide. This, you know, we have some discs and stuff, but I don't want to have to be borrowing a disc. And also I'd have to use my bigger tractor. And if I'm in a spot where the big tractor has my planter or something on it, I'm not going to want to take the planter off to hook up the disc and go work it up. So I wanted a tiller. They got all kinds of different models of tractors and whatnot. And, um, the 5090E is the like base model. The E is. Now, my dad just left on theirs, which is a 5100M. M is like the next level up. And then I don't know, I'm not sure if they have a 5000R, but the R would be like the top end. But the M is the middle and E is the base. Now, this one is kind of an anomaly because it was the show tractor for Tennessee Tractor. Like they went around, it's got a hundred hours on it, which is pretty much brand new, but it has an extra set of hydraulic remotes on it. The, it actually has more hydraulic remotes on it than my dad and them's 5100M. So it's got that radio. I mean, it has everything, but there's just a few little like bells and whistles that it doesn't have. The transmission will be interesting to try out because I noticed it only has A, B, and C range, whereas uh, my dad's has D range as well. And so I'm not, not real sure how that'll work. I don't know, I guess C will just be the fastest range. Oh, Bear, what you been eating, the cat's food? Bear, you been eating the cat's food? Look at me. That's what you did, isn't it? Sit, sit. If you'll notice, look at the bottom of Bear's chin. Look how white his bottom of his hair is down there. They say you're, you know, they they say you you look like your pets, and it's kind of funny. I've got I'm getting some gray, white here in my my beard, and Bear's got quite a bit on his chin now. So I guess I guess we look like each other. Um, all right, <clears throat> that's enough of that side note. But this is the tractor. I am really pumped pumped about getting this in. So I want to address something real quick. 
because I'm sure that there's somebody watching that's like, how the heck is this dude buying all this stuff? Like, is he just going into like a murderous level of debt? And uh, I've touched on it before on Talk Dirt to Me, the podcast to do with my cousin, uh, which again, you need to check out if you don't. It's all ag, unedited. And um, I've talked about it on there. I think I've talked about it on here, but I'm not sure if I have or not. <clears throat> but I am in the mafia and um, they pay really well in the mafia. And so I've made a lot of money working for the mobsters and that's how, I'm just kidding. So obviously I'm just kidding. Hopefully somebody didn't watch that and believe, I mean, if you did, that might be cool that you believe that. I don't know if that's good or bad about me if you thought that was real. But no, so last year, towards the end of the year, I did have the opportunity to sell a farm. And I say opportunity because I, I had no intention of selling this farm. I've never actually bought a farm with the intention of selling a farm. Like that's never been my goal. Every time I've bought a farm, I buy it with the intention of pretty much keeping it until I die. And uh, hoping that my family will do the same. But I had a farm that I had bought and the middle of it, I rented. Well, the middle sold. I had been trying to buy it so I could complete my block. Never would get the opportunity. They never were interested in my offers. I offered them a very, very strong offer for row crop land around here. I would have most likely never made the money back on the farm, but I would have completed the whole block. I'd have owned it all. Well, got a call last year, earlier in the year, that they had sold the center of it. So this logistically became a nightmare for me if I were to continue farming that ground because I would be able to actually see the other part of the farm, but I would have to take off the header, fold up the planters and everything and drive out onto the highway, go down, turn onto another highway, turn a back road just to get to that spot. So I was like, well, that really sucks. That has kind of screwed me, uh, screwed me up there. So they approached me, they said, they'd like to buy yours. And I said, I don't want to sell mine. And we went back and forth and back and forth. And I just threw, threw a number and uh, they got there to uh, what, I, what I was saying. And so I prayed about it and I lost sleep over it, talked to financial advisors about it and uh, talked to farmers about it. And it was the right decision to make to sell the farm. So selling that farm has actually advanced my operation because it has freed me up of debt that I was in. And it's not like, like I don't wanna sound like I have an absolute ungodly amount of money. Like we made good money, but um, it really just helped us to, we've been able to go, all right, we wanna do this produce, this farm store thing. We can jump into doing this without really going into debt. And so that is, the route that we've gone. And um, that's how I'm able to do this. I'm able to buy it. And like, you know, the farm purchases, all of that in my mind is, that is going to make money. That's a, that's an asset. It's not like I'm, look, I would love to have a 69 Camaro, but I'm not buying one. Well, I can't, that's a bad one to use because a 69 Camaro is probably going to just get more valuable like they do. But I would love to have kind of a stupid old muscle car and uh, it's just not a practical thing. It's not gonna make me money. This tractor, tiller, all that's gonna make money on the produce, the service truck that'll be used on the farm, that will be used to make money. So all these things, they're, they're intelligent purchases in my mind. And uh, I was able to do that because of the farm sale. <clears throat> Again, I lost a lot of sleep over it. You know, if you're watching and you're mad at me for doing that, uh, you know, I'm not going to say I'm sorry because uh, it has helped my family and it has helped my operation. It has strengthened my farming operation and will only help us. So um, it is what it is. It's, I've talked about it before, but uh, it became a logistic nightmare. So it was not worth it for me to stay in the game uh, uh, on that, that particular farm. And uh, for really... Let's say I had turned it down. Would I have gotten some pats on the back? Sure. 
would that have helped advance my operation? Absolutely not. So um, by doing so, it has helped me. And I'm just being honest with you guys. You know, like I said, if that makes some of you mad, I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry because I just did what I think was right. And uh, I did lose a lot of sleep over it, but I feel like the right decision was made. So that is how I am able to do a lot of what we're doing right now. But anyways, that's the tractor. And again, I just wanna be transparent with you guys. Like, I don't want you watching these and thinking like, one, I'm going into an insane amount of debt, or two, that you can jump in and buy this, the stuff that I'm buying right now, right out the gate. I mean, you can, but you would literally drown in debt. So, all right, guys, that is it. I did just notice <clears throat> one thing that makes me a little sad about this E model. It doesn't have the little things back here that I was bragging on, on my dad and them. So they got the, you know, where you could lift the arms up and down back here. It does not have it. Darn you, John Deere. Come on now. They got to make it a little less convenient for you, I guess. <clears throat> But all right, guys. Hey, thanks you. Um, thanks you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Uh, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell so you'll be notified when I drop a new one. And uh, I'm about to try to get this this toolbox off or this big chest, and uh, we're gonna see what we can do with that. I ain't made a lot of progress. See, so I got the torch here, grinder there. You might can see some of the smoke coming up off of there. This this is a, this is awful. That thing is on there. I swear they must have like when they were putting these boxes on or some crap they must have put I don't know how they got it on there like they did. It is welded in ways that I can't figure out yet. Been cutting the welds. That's hard as crap to do. I can't get the torch in right there, trying to cut it. I'm going to take a chisel, try to put a chisel on it and hit it and see what I can do. But uh, this thing is on there. I got this huge, my railroad bar here, prying and prying. I cannot get the thing to budge yet. I mean, they put it on there in anticipation that you were going to like have a wreck and barrel roll this thing 18 times and that box would stay on there. So I am going to keep fighting this thing and see what we can do. I've already burned a little hole in the bed trying to get it off of there, which is lovely. Okay, I am back in my pickup, headed to get a little lunch because I can't work on this with an empty stomach. That darn thing is welded on every single mount. So what I'm probably gonna have to do when I get back, I'm sorry, my windshield wipers are a little loud. Um, when I get back, I'm probably gonna have to cut the dang welds or cut the whole brackets off on the bottom, the little mounts. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm really not worried about salvaging the box. It's kind of beat up anyways. I mean, it's probably a good box. Um, and we can still use it for something, but, uh, at this point, I ain't worried about saving nothing, so I'm going to, uh, oh, we got a fire truck coming here. There they go, going to put, put a fire out. It's a nice, nasty, rainy day. They ought to have a little help from Mother Nature on this one. But uh, anyways, yeah, I'm actually gonna just cut the brackets off. It's still gonna kind of stink. I'm gonna have to cut them off the front. I think I've got it, I've got it unhooked enough on the side one side that I think I'm gonna have to cut the two middle, but I mean, it's still not gonna be particularly easy. Um, speaking of cutting, I see the truck in front of me says, life is short, weld naked. That's pretty bold. That's a bold route to go. You know, I'm talking about using a cutting torch, I'm having sparks fly everywhere. That sounds kind of dangerous. I guess life is too short. You should live dangerously is what they're implying. But, uh, so anyways guys i don't know that's what i'm thinking right now i'm if i get back i might i might try to cut some more welds and just see before i resort to completely cutting the brackets off i'm just i'm i'm like shocked at how dang hardcore that thing is welded on there well that uh, is pretty much a wrap on the day we did get show you guys over here 
got the fuel tank off went ahead and took it off and got it off got the box off what a dang job man that box was it, that joker was welded on there like i told y'all for the freaking apocalypse took the tank off i'm glad i did it ended up being a lot of junk like mainly dirt and a little trash kind of in there behind it but uh got that off of there did not make much progress as far as putting stuff on the truck but like i said he's given me several days went ahead through the old you know don't tread on me license plate on the front truck needs a few little little bit of tlc on some areas some of the lights i might change the the lights i've looked at tires today because these are street tires and they are insanely street tires the truck is four wheel drive so i will put some aggressive tires it's hard to really get like mud tires for this truck because it takes the night it's got a 19 and a half inch rim it's real odd it's kind of like it's a real heavy about a 16 ply tire there's not like an abundance of mud tires for it and they are insanely expensive so uh yeah but here is the truck it's emptied out that's where the tank was wired up it's actually gonna work really well this bed is pretty wide those boxes uh i'm thinking gonna put the fuel tank in here offset it put torches right back there in the corner probably stick the welder right here put a hole in that box run the leads in there i'll be able to open the door and run the leads out that'll keep them out of the weather gonna put the air compressor right here i'm gonna mount the angled box i believe i'm gonna mount it probably like right on top of this and so it'll be right here you'll open it up and be able to get to it but I want this to be open so I can get to the fuel uh, fuel tank right there. And uh, I'm gonna have that there. I'm gonna put my chest box, I believe it's gonna fit right here. Drawers are, will open in here. Uh, it would be really handy, obviously, to be able to open it just straight from right here. But I really like this. This is a very stout railing on here. I don't wanna have to mess it up on there. I am gonna have to do a little modifying on, on here though, because I gotta have my vise on here. So I'm gonna probably cut cut this section, like cut a line right there, probably cut a line right there. And essentially, I would like to actually just basically flip it over so it'll still have this area closed in, but uh, the vise will mount right there on the corner. You really need your vise on the corner there where you can kind of work on it work on stuff a lot better but uh yeah i'm i'm pretty excited it'll this space here like i said torches will go there i'm gonna put the compressor probably right over in here but i want an area here for some more buckets of hydraulic oil it's got a really handy thing right here for a bucket of hydraulic oil so i'll put that there but i am it's always kind of exciting to set up your truck but you want to do it right. So tomorrow and uh, the next day, I will be spending trying to put everything on there and then look at it and decide if I like how everything's positioned. So, but overall, I think this is going to be a really solid truck. Again, I mean, it's, there's a few little dents and dings in places. I mean, it's, it's cleaner than the one that I had. My, my Duramax in there has been a wonderful truck. But it did have it had been side swiped on both sides and um so but i gotta gotta get this one dialed in it's got a pretty good something has really scratched the window here i don't know what did that i'm pretty sure that's on the um it may be no it is that's on the outside but i've got to get the windows tinted I like it pretty much murdered out. I'll get the windows tinted, probably get the strip or so on the windshield. Got a few lights I gotta replace. There's some bulbs that are out, um, but we'll get the truck dialed in and it'll be ready to rock. But uh, yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for the day. I'm about to get in here, take a shower and go grab some dinner. But uh, my help did leave. I don't know if I told y'all that. My, if you notice, my kids are not here. My mom showed up and uh she asked if they wanted to go to nana's house and so they abandoned me to go to nana's um but 
it was kind of cold and nasty out here anyway so that's a better place for them to be anyways but uh that's it for this video guys um again i hope you kind of can see we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up like i can't wait to really get this thing rocking and rolling and uh yeah it's gonna be awesome so guys thank you for tuning in please hit that like button hit subscribe share it with your friends help share this on facebook instagram your stories whatever just share it that really helps a lot and uh we'll catch you next week and also comment below some stuff that you'd love for me to see if there's topics you'd like for me to talk about um any of that any of that i i had a guy uh, i will say real quick i had a guy stop me in the grocery store the other day and uh tell me that some of my videos had really had helped him out on their plan to buy a farm and he had talked to somebody that i had recommended so thought that was uh, really awesome i appreciated him uh, stopping me and saying that it's always cool to know that what i'm saying does help you know obviously we show a lot of cool fun stuff but when i do that especially the informational stuff um you hope that people get something out of it and that it helps them out so that was awesome to hear uh ricky appreciate you uh stopping me and, and telling me that in the, the store and uh talking to me man i'm excited to hear uh what y'all are able to do i think you're gonna i'm looking forward to seeing you get some land and seeing what you do with it i think it'll be awesome and uh guys that is uh that's gonna be it for the video again i gotta get in here get ready to go eat but uh, we'll catch you next time